Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you're here for the first time, awesome. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. And if you're here for a second, third, or fourth time, thank you so much for coming back and continuing your painting process. In today's painting, this is going to be a Georgia O'Keeffe painting and a bit more of, um, I guess we would call an advanced beginner because we're gonna go uh, work on more wet on wet blending and work in smaller sections and move our way across the canvas. So if you are a first time painter, I would recommend that you try some of my other videos geared towards first time painters, get comfortable with the process, and then when you're a little more comfortable with holding the brush and mixing your paint, then try this video, because um, it might be a little too much for this being your first painting. Um, so with that being said, this is gonna be diving into more of the wet on wet blending and more brush control uh, for these George O'Keefe paintings. So what you're gonna see in the description box below is a link to a supply kit. And in that supply kit is all the paint, brushes, canvas, everything that you need to get started painting um, for this project. What you're also gonna see in the description box below is a link to what I call a traceable. And a traceable is a way to get that initial composition on your canvas before you start painting. Um, and you would transfer it using carbon paper or graphite paper. You also have the option that you can pause um, the video where that traceable image shows up and draw what you see on your canvas. So there's information in the description box below, whichever method works for you, make that happen and then pick up the video for the painting portion. Uh, with this video and any video that I create, you have full permission to deviate from the instruction. If you wanna change out colors, if you wanna do something different, it's just important that you actually paint. All right, and no matter what you do today, just have fun, get lost in the process of painting and just kind of forget about the world for a little bit. So enough talking, let's jump into the painting process. All right, guys, it's going to be another fun painting. Perfect practice for getting comfortable with blending. This is a Georgia O'Keeffe abstract painting. So gather your supplies, transfer your traceable to your surface, and as always, make sure you take your progress photos. Now what you're gonna see on the video is I went over my traceable lines with a black Sharpie marker. You do not have to do this. This is more for those of you at home that are gonna draw what you see. So we are starting off with our middle flat brush and we're gonna build on a lot of concepts here um, or build on the same concept throughout the painting. So we're gonna lay our base and we're using a medium yellow and that is, or a light yellow, and that is white and yellow. Um, and we're gonna fill in that whole beginning part of the spiral. Then we're gonna grab the pointy brush and introduce some orange pigment on the edges and then kind of pull that into this base color. So what you're gonna get out of this video is the fact that a little bit of pigment will go a long way when you're doing your blending. You'll get comfortable with kind of the pressure of your brush and just kind of mixing it and diffusing the colors into each other. So remember to breathe as you go through the process and just kind of have fun. Um, now, George O'Keefe did do original, do these in watercolors. So that's a completely different method than what we're doing with acrylic paint, um, but still a great thing to practice with. So I am using student grade paint and I am applying this paint rather thick. So that way we can have some blending. All right, so now we're gonna move into orange and you can see that I grabbed the pointy brush and basically grab that pure pigment and we're just gonna put it in a few areas, kind of on the perimeter. And then with light pressure, we're gonna go back and blend this into that light yellow base. Um, and again, this is just getting you comfortable with your brush pressure and blending the two colors. And this is something that you could practice multiple times um, throughout your, your year, throughout your life, throughout your career, and you'll get more and more comfortable with each one. So now as we do the blending, um, if you need to, you can wipe any excess paint off of your brush, but we're coming in with just light pressure and pulling that dark orange pigment into that base of the light yellow. And again, you're observing just kind of what the transition looks like, what it feels like to pull that paint in there. And uh, this is gonna be a nice painting just to kind of get lost in the process. 
And if you feel like it, if you're inclined, you can do this finger painting. It is uh, really nice and tactile to just kind of get your fingers in there and squish the colors in. Um, and another tip is when you're using the brush, kind of holding that brush at a 45 degree angle, almost using the side of the brush will help for your blending, especially since you have applied the paint a little bit thicker. Now, if you are uh, finding that your brush is kind of shaky, that means you're holding your breath. So if you exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas, that will help your process. And again, you saw me even clean the brush, wipe it off, and you can go back and do some blending. If you need to, you can even go back and grab that original color if you need to diffuse it um, uh, more or if that darker pigment uh, was almost just too powering. So blending is a lot of kind of back and forth. And here you can see that I just grabbed the white. It was already pretty light, so it's not a huge difference, but just kind of getting that lighter color in the middle of this spiral shape. All right, so now we're gonna actually um, add a little bit of purple. And again, using that pointy brush, um, we're gonna go back and make it kind of a medium purple, not the direct purple. And we're adding this to kind of the central center section of that spiral. And same thing as applying that orange. We're just putting it on the perimeter and then wipe that brush off and then with light pressure pull this light orange or light purple into the light yellow and when you're done with this pause your video and take your progress photo you're doing a great job all right so we're going to go back to the middle flat brush and back to that light yellow color um, and again, if you want to pull up the original Georgia O'Keeffe painting for this, feel free to do that. And if you observe something in the original painting um, that I don't add, feel free to add that to your painting. Whether you're watching the video or looking at the original painting, you are strengthening your power of observation. And that is a core foundational skill in uh, the art world and definitely in life. So the more observant you are, just the more observant you are and the better human being you can be. All right, so same thing, we put that base in, and if you want, you can switch back down to that small pointy brush as you apply the orange, or do what I just did with the middle flat brush, and I turn that brush sideways, so that way I'm using the skinnier portion um, to apply the orange paint. Now, if you apply the orange paint and it actually diffuses more than you wanted it to, you can always go back and apply more um, orange or more of the color that you're introducing. Like I do uh, kind of right here where it gets a little closer where the spirals are meeting together um, or elements are meeting together, it does get a little bit darker. And again, remember every now and then sometimes you do want to wipe up that excess paint off and then go back with that light pressure and do your blending. This is a skill that you'll constantly just keep evolving uh, the more that you paint. All right, so going into kind of a light pink now. So putting some of that uh, white aside, tiny, tiny, tiny amount of red goes a long way to make our light pink. And it was pretty light here. And we're gonna put this in a couple of places. We're gonna do, uh, just like we did on the first section, we're gonna lay this base, put some darker in there, and then we'll repeat that in another section. So again, this is just really good to build your comfort level with blending and taking it one step at a time. And again, if you need to switch brushes, if you do need to use the small pointy brush or maybe even a bigger brush if you're on a larger canvas, um, adjust and switch your brushes to what you need. And I am painting this kind of quickly, so my other colors are still wet. And if I do recommend that you paint this a little bit faster um, or not wait for each section to dry. So that way you can really work on your brush control as one wet color comes up to another color. All right, so same thing like we did in the last step. We're adding this direct red to the edges, and then we'll clean the brush and blend that into the base light pink. And again, as you're doing your blending, just observe um, how the colors change as you blend it into the lighter color, how much pigment goes, um, and again, just how your comfort level gets more and more comfortable uh, the more that you paint. It's very therapeutic just to move paint on the canvas. All 
All right, doing great. Again, remember to breathe. It does not help to hold your breath as you are doing this. All right, now we're actually gonna grab that white, put it, place it right below that line. And again, same thing, kind of pull that white into that light pink and notice that with the lighter colors, they actually get eaten up in the darker colors a lot quicker. So you'll be more generous with the amount of white compared to the darker colors. So again, going back to that light pink, filling in this kind of um, elongated triangle shape, same thing, being very cautious and controlled with your brush strokes as you come up next to the other colors and the other wet paint. If you do want to, <clears throat> excuse me, if you do want to let this dry, um, as you go from section to section, that's perfectly okay as well. Uh, like always, adjust what you need to for your creative process. All right, and again, adding that red to the perimeter, then we'll wipe that brush off and drag it and blend it into the base color. There is something rather relaxing about just moving and blending paint. So same thing, I did that with the orange. It just gives a little bit of a different uh, color and feel. All right, a good place to pause your video and take your progress photo. And you are more than welcome to take progress photos at times I do not recommend it. All right, and again here, you saw me grab a blob of white and kind of put it in the center of that light pink area. All right, doing good. All right, so more light pink. I did try to keep with the kind of the same colors as we move along. And if you want, maybe go just a touch darker for the light pink as we're starting in this center area. It is a little bit darker um, on the original O'Keeffe painting. And as we do this, again, you can grab that small pointy brush, but I do recommend that maybe in one, of your, one time that you paint this to kind of stick with using more of that middle flat brush and try holding the brush in the different directions. Like you've seen me use it sideways, you've seen me use the full width of it. Um, I haven't quite done the cross hatching marks uh, that I do in other videos here. But again, just kind of get comfortable with um, different ways to hold your brush, different pressure, um, getting comfortable with the blending. Here we grab that direct purple. Um, it's quite dark as that spiral element is uh, turning in on itself. So adding the purple to the red, um, just actually makes for a very warm and darker purple. And realize that I need it a little bit darker um, at the bottom of this element. And again, my paint is still wet, so I'm able to add this and blend it in. And I've always been fascinated at how when you blend in one color into another, how it changes compared to a different color, like they each have their own really kind of cool value. All right, so now grabbing uh, the black, again, just going a little bit darker and a little bit of black goes a long way um, when you're doing your mixing and blending. Again, something that you're, you'll get more comfortable with and your brain will recognize even more the more that you paint. And painting's not about being perfect, but just getting more comfortable with your tools and your own process. And really even learning to be more observant and look at the world from a new perspective. All right, good place to pause the video, take your progress photo. We're gonna clean that brush really good and we're gonna go up to a light orange. And that's gonna be your white with a little bit of orange. We're gonna fill in this area. That pink is still wet, so I'm gonna be able to blend a little bit of that in there. And again, work on your brush control and pressure. You guys are doing great. This is, um, if you do feel like doing this in the original uh, watercolor style, uh, feel free to do that. It, it lends um, to a really nice and kind of fun process of watching the colors mix together. All right, so now moving into the orange. Like I said, I'm still kind of sticking with that large flat brush, but holding it sideways and holding it in um, different angles or medium flat brush, sorry. I did have my coffee this morning. <laughs> All right, and then again, just blending that in there, observing what you see on the screen or what you are looking at on the original O'Keeffe painting.
You guys are doing great. And one of the best things about painting is you just, you're kind of getting lost in this blending, getting lost in the process, and you forget about the rest of the world for a little bit. All right, going in with that red, going a little bit darker in that area. I really do appreciate the variety of colors and gradation in O'Keeffe's work. All right, and a little bit of brush maintenance. If you are looking at your brush and you're getting a lot of buildup of paint, kind of where the metal and the bristles meet, um, feel free to just clean that brush off, wipe it off, clean it off in the water, and um, those bristles kind of come back together to create smaller uh, brush strokes. It's a lot to kind of think about when you're beginning your stages, so just keep getting better with your own skills. All right, so we're going to grab uh, kind of a medium orange or a bit more of that direct orange and apply it um, in that center section. So just kind of go in a little bit darker as we move along. And again, I believe my paint is still wet. If yours is dry and you can't kind of blend a little bit or soften the edge between this orange and this pink, that is okay. And again, as you're using student grade paint, Maybe a little more transparent, so if you apply it a little bit thicker, um, it'll be a little more opaque for you. So taking that red on the bottom part of that orange we just applied and going to blend it in. This actually, this reddish orange is one of my favorite colors. It's just so nice and vibrant. <laughs> and the more that you paint, the more you'll kind of find your favorite color combos and just kind of pay attention to that. And notice if they change um, throughout the time that you paint. For me, I certainly have kind of like favorite colors of the year or favorite colors of the season. All right, so just uh, adjusting my napkin so that way I have a bit more of a clean spot. So feel free to do that for yourself or even clean and get fresh water. And don't forget to take your progress photos. So now that we're moving into cooler colors, it, you definitely want to clean your brush really good, possibly get that fresh water um, as you move into cool colors so you don't contaminate it. And we're using a light teal, um, white plus a little bit of teal. If you do not have teal, you can use green or even blue. You do not have to keep, uh, keep with the exact same colors um, that was in the original painting or what I'm using here. All right, and again, using that middle flat brush, just trying to hold it at different angles and get comfortable with pressure and using the edge of the brush. Remember to breathe. You guys are doing a great job. So same thing, switching brushes down to that pointy brush and the direct teal, placing it where I want, and then we're going to be blending that into the base. So I'm really proud of you guys for painting at home and pushing your skills and just getting more comfortable with blending and with the process of painting. I'm a big advocate of everybody finding a creative outlet in their life. And if you don't like painting, please try a different creative outlet. Try uh, maybe a different teacher, a different medium, watercolors, colored pencils, music, dance. Um, we as human beings need a creative outlet. We are healthier and we are better individuals uh, when we're a little more balanced. And we're also a little better, we're more kind people <laughs> when we're a little more balanced. And I want more and more kind people on this planet. We need it. So creativity is a great outlet for that. So while I was talking, I did grab a little bit of that blue. Same thing, kind of push it on there. And now we're going to grab a little bit of black. Because again, kind of the um, high contrast area of this painting is where all those elements are kind of come to get, coming together in that um, almost the center of that little spiral element. And again, even with the blues and the purples and the reds and the black, a little bit of pigment will go a long way. So this is one of those times, uh, sometimes that less is more. So if you start off with adding just a little bit of pigment and it's not enough, you can always add more pigment. But sometimes if you add too much, you either have to wipe it off with a paper towel or it's a little bit more difficult to um, get it back to a lighter color. Again, all of that will become more and more comfortable the more that you paint. 
All right, so we have this last top section, and we'll be getting pretty dark here. So I am using that direct teal. You can go for medium teal or the direct teal. And then we will be using black to kind of blend in with this. And if you want, if this medium brush is too small for you, feel free to move up to the big flat brush. And again, just observe the kind of general place that I'm going to put this, and then we'll be mixing black in with it. Again, applying that paint uh, a bit on the thick side so we have a little bit more opaque coverage. And if you need to, if you can't, you can tone it down. If you were doing the direct teal and now you want to go a little bit lighter, you can add a touch of white. I actually like adding some white to my color, even though I try to keep it kind of dark, just because the white has a little bit of a better um, body and a little more opaqueness than some of my other transparent paint colors. Again, you will find your groove with the tools that you're use, utilizing and get comfortable with. All right, so wipe that brush off. You don't have to clean it. I'm just going to grab some white paint, put a little bit of a highlight in here. And again, you see how quickly that lighter color diffuses into the darker color. And then we'll be grabbing black for that um, remaining portion of that corner. Oh, I forgot about the red. This is kind of a pretty color too. So taking that red, putting it right into the teal, and look at what that really pretty... Um, deep purplish color that it makes. Again, this is one of the other fun parts about blending paint and just kind of getting lost in your own creative process. Lots of new happy accidents and fun little discoveries um, about how colors mix. You can always add a little bit more. And I did forget to mention at the beginning um, when you're bringing your colors to the edge of your canvas, if you're on a stretched canvas, wrap it around the side. Um, just looks nice when you hang it on the wall. And if you forgot, especially since I forgot to remind you at the beginning, you can let your painting dry and just paint the edges black. That's what I end up doing on most of mine. And with that, bl the black edges, it just gives it a nice kind of uh, solid frame, in my opinion. All right, so you see where I put some, slap some of that black on there. And instead of going back and grabbing more, um, just going to blend what I can and then go back and grab a little bit as needed. Because again, as you notice, as you start to put this over the teal, or even grabbing more teal like I am right here and blending it in, still a little bit of that black goes a long way in your mixture. If you do get too much um, of this color on your uh, canvas, you can wipe it off with a paper towel and reapply. Uh, the black and the darker colors are quite powerful. Um, so you will find your own balance with the mixture. And even here, you can go back with that teal once it's on there. You can even throw in some white. Um, blending is a big back and forth. So the more you paint, the more you're going to find your groove. So thank you guys so much for hanging out and getting creative. Don't wait too long to do your next painting. And until then, cheers. Hey guys, I hope your paintings turned out really nice. I have no doubt that George O'Keefe would be proud of you. I'm proud of you for painting at home. And it is okay to do this video more than once. You will strengthen those skills and get more and more comfortable with blending and doing some of those subtle transitions. So thanks again for practicing and continuing to evolve your skills. As you're uploading your videos to social media, please tag me at Paint with Lovejoy um, or hashtag paint with lovejoy or even email them to me. I really like to see your guys' uh, finished results. And then when I post those to social media, it encourages other people to uh, jump in on the painting process as well. So you are a huge, huge help for getting other people to paint and for continuing the success of this channel. So please spread the word. Um, if there's anything you want me to paint in the future, you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment in, um, in the, the comments below, and I do my best to respond to just about every comment on there. Like I said, I appreciate your support. So thanks again for taking time out of your day to hang out with me, keep on painting, and I will see you for the next painting session. Cheers. Yeah.